How do you expect this year to be different from last year in terms of where the money is going, the kind of com companies that investors are interested in? Well, one of the themes that we see is the tech enablement of industries. So think about healthcare, life, um, healthcare, transportation, agriculture, food tech. Many uh, investment opportunities are in those, but that's going to continue throughout time. And I think that provides a great investment thesis over time, and we're seeing that, and we expect to see that in the coming year. So, you know, when it comes to biotech, health tech, you know, th is that something that you're seeing getting a lot of pickup? We're seeing that, and we're also seeing, actually, we're, gonna, we're expecting to see a big uh, boom, you know, in the first quarter to around from an IPO perspective, which will provide good liquidity into the venture market. So the question is, Julie, mm -hmm. there's a lot of money. Right. Um, is there enough places to put that money? <laughs> It doesn't seem like it because right now venture capital's firms still have a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. I also cover fintech and that was an area that they're starting to deploy more money into. It's gaining a, a higher percentage of the funding now. But again, they, it's it's hard to find places to put that in. Healthcare is seeing a lot more, fintech, and then of course if Uber or Lyft stay private for longer then they're going to command more financing rounds too. How does you know, SoftBank and, and you know that amount of money, Jeff, change the landscape? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting, you know, anytime you have that amount of money move in and some of the rounds that we've talked about, the interesting thing is I think you take a step back and you look at this is a, I think a result of, you know, a zero interest rate environment because investors are now having to seek more risk to, to find yield. And now we're starting to see that come to, come to roost. And so uh, it's never been less expensive to start a company, yet it's been never more costly to break away from the pack. And so we've seen in a research we did, we found that the number of venture-backed startups in the United States tripled in one venture generation. So from the end of two, in 2003, it went from 6,000. Now we have over 18,000 venture-backed companies. Do you think ICOs will be an alternative way for startups to raise? ICOs have had a great year in terms of, you know, they raised $5 billion last year. Uh, venture raised 80. Um, so I don't think it replaces venture funding. It may provide a place, but I think in the near term, you're going to see increased regulation to provide investor protection, which I think is a good thing. Do you think that will ultimately place a cap on how much you could raise in an ICO? I mean, maybe it's 84 f versus 5 billion now, but in two, three years, could the balance of power be different? It's in, well, <clears throat> in its current form, most of these ICOs, the analogy I use is, is it's like you're buying frequent flyer miles for an airline that hasn't, that has no routes and has no airplane built yet. Because really you're being, you're talking about buying coins to use on a service that's going to be built. And really the value that has been there is the idea that it's always going to go up. And today we're finding that's not the case.